apparently we're live. Full armor's in. Full armor's here. What's up, brother? How yeah, much extra? Extra. Well, you're just a wide load. So. Well, that's kind of rude. Oh, we're gonna kind of hang out here, see if anyone else wants to turn in, see what's going on. Honestly, I mean, we're just kind of winging this. This is again kind of like the first live stream, a practice for me, practice for Oki. You guys don't know Oki's name. It's John. We got three. What's up, Sean? I get you knowing everybody by name. I'm, I'm trying to. That's see, that's that's my memory is not so hot though. Okay. As I've had ten concussions in my lifetime. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ten concussions in my lifetime. So my memory is is not so hot. Sometimes it's on, sometimes most times it's off. I, I've seen him every day for the last year and he barely remembers me, so it's because I want to forget him. But that's true. So let's talk about this weekend, this upcoming weekend. We got uh, we got a little Sunday trip planned. All right. First off, how's fall fishing going for you? you got <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's only been fall for like two days. I mean, I would consider last Sunday the first <sighs> yeah, bit of fall. That's true. That's true. Um, we're out on the lake, out on the kayaks. Uh, John already uploaded his video for, it, and what we did was um, battle the bugs. And this is actually a series that I'm I'm going to start, I believe. I'm going to call it Bait Battle, okay? So what Bait Battle is going to be is I'm just going to take similar baits and pit them against each other, you know, whether it be me and John or me and somebody else or me by myself and just see which one performs the best. I'm actually working on my video right now for that because I suck and I have a bunch of other videos that I end up doing beforehand. So I'm way behind. It'd be like at that. least a wait, at least at least a loop. Can you read? Do you have yeah, better eyes? I, I, do? I don't know. My, <laughs> my car broke down. I had to get a new ride. Then got a flat tire, so I'm gonna go fishing tomorrow. Out boy, yeah, Frank. Frank, you better get after it. Out of boy. Nothing, nothing less than ten pounders, Frank. Oh, all right. So this weekend, we are going down south, making like an hour and a half trip down south. Actually, that way. And it's that way down south but new water and i'm doing a monster bass slam i believe you are too yeah okay so we're doing a slam we're gonna no, try and throw down throw down slam whatever so we are trying to catch fish on every bait that is in the box now the catch is i'm actually fishing against mikey Mosier. i don't know if you guys know who that is it's sawgrass bassin or sawgrass fishing I don't know, Captain Mikey Mosier. This guy's a stud. He's legit. He's got probably 10 plus years fishing experience on me. He lives in Florida as well. He's going to a lake that he knows. He's got the home court advantage. I'm still going to whoop that butt. Radio edit. Still going to whoop him. So, pretty pumped up for this weekend. Our buddy John, he's taking us on his boat, and then we're taking the kayaks out as well. And uh, that's the plan, is to get out there, get on the boats, and uh, catch some fish. Now, what me and Mikey said to distinguish the winner, because I'm obviously going to catch fish on every bait in the box. I mean, that's, that's going to happen. And if he can do that, if he can complete that challenge, then Big Fish wins. Oh, you don't talk at all, do you? Me? Oh, like, oh I, I was reading. I'm sorry. I'm reading. What is my channel? My channel is Oki Outdoor Adventures. Go sub to my buddy, John. I think the uh, I, mean, I, I, I don't remember. I think the picture is of me holding a bass in a green hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> More years fishing on the yet. That's right. That is right. Here, I'll, I'll give you a, a, some channel art. Maybe if you can see it. I don't know. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to talk about fall. It's backwards, but yeah, it's I mean, backwards. Yeah. You, you get the point. You got it. Um, so last Sunday was probably our first day of fall. Um, Tomorrow is going to be the first day of winter. Well, it's it's going to be 34, 35 in the morning. Yeah. Like it's not, 
it's not hitting 40s until about 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Which is about the so, time we're done on Saturdays. Yeah. So last Sunday was was pretty good. Um, John ended up with like six or seven fish. Six, yeah, uh, six total. Six total fish. I ended up catching five. But one of them was an absolute tank. Oh, it was it, a monster. It was close to a whale. I did freak out. <laughs> the did. video is coming he out did. tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. So, Brody. River birds. That's, that, that's river birds? Hey, dude. Oh. My son's on here. Nice. If you started the channel up already, guys, go go follow my son. Go follow Riverbirds. Go sub to him. He hey, does some. You're gonna laugh. <laughs> yeah, he he said I do really random videos. So is is full armor? Is that Sean or is that upstate is Sean? Upstate Sean. Full armor. Thanks for the sub, my friend. I appreciate it. Full armor is a good dude. Very I appreciate dude. that. Very good family man. Speaking of family. Speaking of family. It's a whale. Yes. Yeah, it 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 was very close to a whale. I don't want to spoil it, but it was close to five, close to five pounds. Hey, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking spawn. That's that's a seven and a half pound fish because it mm -hmm. was thick. Wait till you see yep. the video, guys. I mean, it, it's easy to exaggerate in the moment, right? You've caught a big fish. You're you're looking at it. Your perspective is, I've just caught this monster. But for me, objectively, seeing it from from where I saw it, this thing was huge. This thing was huge. It was. She was big. Yeah. She was big. She boiled. Um, I had flipped back into a little cut, and she chased it out and boiled about three foot from the kayak. So I talking about videos here. Um, one thing that I want to do, and I want to let you guys know who all is watching, whoever does watch this. I love what I'm doing with the videos. I love going out and catching fish. I love doing these things. But one thing I need to work on is vocalizing how I'm breaking things down in my head. So that is one thing that I'm going to try and do better at is vocalizing how I'm breaking stuff down. The other thing that I'm going to try and do, because I'm I'm a funny motherfucker. Most of the time. I'm funny. Like I I can get pretty He's dang humble too, y'all. Funny. Very, I am humble, humble and funny. I'm waiting until I can fish. All right. Very, very nice to meet you, Adam. So um, I'm going to bring humor back. I mean, I got to – like I always said that was going to stay true to me, and that is true to me. So there's <laughs> going to be some funny – I got some funny stuff planned. This, this is my this is my plug moment, but if you want to see true – True humor from Alex. Go look at any of the intros on my video. He <laughs> trolls me so hard. I'm trying to be serious, and this guy's over here ripping ass, or uh, it, it doesn't matter. He's doing backflips off the truck, throwing stuff at me. I'm he not doing backflips. Hooked me in the top of the head with a frog in the spring, and I, he, he's, he's a <laughs> jerk. <laughs> I'm honestly, I'm a very nice guy. I'm very, but very funny as well. So even Brody knows I'm funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I haven't oiled it yet, Clint. I need to. I actually just spooled up the SLX. Guys, a little feedback on the 13 Concept Z. They're still on sale on Amazon. 100 bucks. I'm telling you. And I'm a nice guy. What do you want, Brody? <laughs> yeah, he's up to something. Yeah, I know. You're up to something. Look, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a 13 fishing guy, but after what I witnessed last night, do it for a hundred bucks. We had. Uh, I, I'd have ten of them. Did you find them for? Yeah, good. I'm. I'm telling you, the Concept Z. We probably had what twelve to fifteen mile an hour wind. Sustained wind. It wasn't just gust. I mean, it was blowing in our face. Yeah. And I cast straight into the wind. No thumb on the spool. No backlash. No loops. Nothing. I did it twice with my lose and then knotted up about 150 yards worth of line. Alex hooked me and – Almost. Uh, I didn't hook him. I hooked his line that was hanging. It was bad. Flowing all in the wind. But now the, the 13, and it sounds so good, man. I just – I don't know. See, this will be my first first foray into Shimano. I want a 7.6 medium heavy. Nice. Yeah. So I've never had Shimano. I've never had 13. Um, I'm fishing on a budget. It is really what it is. You know, balling on a budget, but definitely fishing on a budget. Concept A. Z is great. Ah, yeah. I've been looking at those too. 
Um, I've been looking at the Inception. I'm just thinking about there's a couple of reels that I'm definitely going to hang on to for my boys for them to learn on as far as bait casters go. But I'm definitely going to be looking for, you know, to get rid of some other ones and then upgrade reels. As far as DCs go, and this is for you, Sean, I don't plan on ever paying for a DC. I I just – I will not. I I don't want to. I just – I'll probably eat my words probably later eventually. down the road. <laughs> right now, it just doesn't make sense. No, right, right got, now, it doesn't make sense to me. You've got quality equipment. Yeah. Uh, you don't drop it in the lake like some people. Mm. Um, <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah. I don't know. You t tell them the story. I got to text the wife so, real quick. I'll, I'll keep it short. I cast into a tree. I broke my favorite rod, which I carry this around as a memento of my absolute stupidity. Not to be confused with a favorite. Yeah, not not a favorite rod, but my favorite rod. Uh, but anyway, I took the reel off of it because uh, we pulled back in. It, it was raining, so I took the reel off and threw it in my kayak crate because I wanted to keep it safe. And uh, tried to pull my anchor, and my reel handle was stuck on the anchor, and into the water it went. So... Yeah, now I'm throwing uh, a reel that Alex loaned me uh, with the wrong hand, mind you. It's the wrong hand. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Sorry. So, yeah. Carry on. Uh, not worth it. Decent. What a big Nick! Man, look at this these. is going to be a lot easier for me to F fish the like, odds and breaking rods. Yeah. My... What is it? Uh, ripping lips and bending tips. <laughs> or maybe I said that backwards. But... <laughs> Semantics at this I point. I told right? you it's not worth it. Okay. You're right. Whoa, big I get it. Nick. Whoa. I get it. I get Whoa. it. I get it. I get it. Hey, let's. What's up, crackers? Brody said, Yeah, I'm the only one that don't know what you're talking about is in fishing. Doesn't. What? Doesn't. Know. Don't. I don't, I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. Correct your English there, boy. Get your grammar. Okay. You guys catch this. Just because you Missouri don't mean you can talk like that now. I you didn't. Uh, I, don't, I don't. Did you go fishing today? <laughs> no. No, I didn't go fishing today. No. It was too cold. No, no fishing today. Um, we will be fishing tomorrow. <laughs> it's too cold to go today when it's yeah. 50, but we're going when it's 30. Yeah, over. 30 degrees tomorrow. Um, have no idea. So this is my first foray into fall and winter fishing. I have, I mean, it, it's been, Ooh. I look back, it's been about 10 plus years since a, I've fished. That's a good question. What's that? Points question. I can't read it. Uh, the Savage Gear Bat. Oh, the Savage Gear Bat. Dude, I've thrown it a couple times, and I – nothing. The action is really, really good, in yeah. my opinion. It scares the hell out of me. Like, it, it's got a freaky face. Um, I I definitely – I understand. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Nick. <laughs> um, cool. come, come on, James. <laughs> Um, I'm going to remember that analogy. Oh, I'm going to use that in the future. Um, uh, yeah, but as far as like walking bait, I know they work, but my style of fishing and what I've done, it just it wasn't working for me. Now, I did not dedicate time to actually using it. I mean, we were using on a pond that has got definite top water action, but it was getting no activity. Yeah, it was. I was. I there's a lot of high veg too so i kept getting tangled up on it it was just kind of rough cooter yeah wind was bad when was bad today when was bad last night as well luckily tomorrow even though it's going to be cold it doesn't look like it's going to be too windy at all nah, not too bad so i don't know i think that we're going to uh, i'm i know i'm going to toss out shaky head i'm going to try and work that a little bit um i'm obviously going to throw some top water even with it being 30 degrees i'm still going to throw some so, reaction innovations. I've actually not used too many of theirs. I have. I, yeah, I, I like them. I mean, I mean, I got their skinny dippers, and I use those down at the dam for sand bass. But as far as creature baits and everything like that, I haven't. I've really kind of stuck to uh, the bandito bug. <laughs> <laughs> Riley and, and Upstater, bug. Riley and Upstate are both outing us talking about They're it being too cold. They're dealing with snow. It's like 20 in the listen, morning. There. Listen, Linda. Come on now. Okay. I was stationed in Alaska. I'm well aware what cold is. I served in Afghanistan. I've got cold weather injuries. I pressed each twice in Call of Duty. Okay, anyways. But in all honesty, I've got cold weather injuries. Big Nick, grip and rip it outdoors. He will 
what's a test to this for? Yeah. A test. A test to it. I've got fingers that will go completely numb, completely white, just lose all feeling in them. Toes will go numb. So, yeah, I mean, Alaska, where I was at, I was in Anchorage, and it wasn't uh, – I mean, Anchorage is nice because it's on the coast. It got cold in the wintertime for sure, but it's not, like, super cold. Um, Fort Wainwright up in Fairbanks, that's that's another monster. I mean, that's that's some cold stuff up there. So get some D-bombs is what I need to get. Well, we don't talk about that, Brody. That's supposed to be uh, our secret buddy. Bro, yeah, he he didn't just beat me. He he whooped me. What's up, mass fishing? Top water and swim baits all day, man. Swim baits, Cooter, you're absolutely right there. I think the last what three weeks I've been throwing mm. a ton of swim baits and doing really well on them. Not on swim baits, but swimming creature baits. Might be on problems. Yeah, you're right, Nick. You're right. <laughs> what did I do in the army? I was uh, airborne infantry in the army. That's what I did. No, oh, a bearded non-crayon eater. Don't give him too much credit. <laughs> yeah. Don't give him too You're much credit. You're damn right. I didn't eat no crayons. He is a window licker, though. Yeah, I will. I will. Let's see. Oh, hey, you want to smell this? Oh, you were in Wainwright. <sighs> then you know. No, I don't want to smell that. You sure? You know it was cold. I keep one behind my ear. Hmm. 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 Man. EWG kill weighted hook. For swim baits, you know what I have done? I mean, I've I've got the keel weighted hooks and I've not used them as much. I've just always thrown a one eighth ounce Texas rig. Underspins for me. Underspins for you. I've got a couple of underspins now. I mean, I'm trying to branch out. I'm trying to do do different stuff here. Sugar bears. Grip and rivets thrown out. Throwing Big John. Rugs. Hey. Oh, your bat your dad was in the 101st. Good for him. Heck yeah, screaming chickens. Don't Dude, tell my sister. Man, that. don't call me Shrek. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, my niece is uh call me Uncle Shrek. It's kind of funny. Dude, yeah, how I mean, like, I how it. bad was Wainwright though? I mean, I heard horror stories. I had to do I got into a little bit of trouble. Okay. So I had to do extra duty. I was out chipping ice, and then when I came back in after 15, 20 minutes of chipping ice to warm back up. I was getting told stories about Wainwright, and I know like in the wintertime when guys were doing extra duty or having to chip ice, they would be out there for five minutes and then have to come back in for 15 to 20 to warm back up. That's brutal. That cold. That oh, cold. did you see the overnight lows for my 48-hour uh, uh, survival challenge next week? Mm -mm. Low 40s, high 30s. Okay. Look. You got plenty of – I got hoodies, man. I don't have survival gear. He was stationed in Alaska as well. Very cool. Nice. <laughs> you knew that was coming. Cold weather right there. What am I streaming on this? It's on my laptop, bub. I'm streaming this on my laptop. Guys, in case you're wondering, Riverbirds is my son, Brody. That's that's who's talking. Yeah. The cold, Brody. Cold and Wainwright, for sure. Fairbanks, Alaska is no joke. No joke at all. Look, I've never I've never done anything remarkable. So the ADX six cents killed this week for Big John. Yeah, I did have you uploaded that video yet, Big John? I know you uh the last one you went out with your buddies, you got on a couple of really good fish that looked like um uh, we need to get you on some deer, man, or or get those hogs cleaned out so they'll leave your corn alone. Okay, so the bat isn't a bait that's ever going to be real productive. It's something you can fish on very social circumstances. Come fishing, come fishing with us in the morning, then Nick, meet us. Come on, come on, big Nick, Stony. I I definitely agree with you on that. Um, I really think that the the bat is going to be a uh, what's what I'm looking for. Special circumstance, environment. Yeah, um, except we only threw it at one spot. I, yeah. I'd like to give it another shot. My yeah. dog tried to carry it off the other day. Stupid. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I told you guys that was one that I wasn't too thrilled about, but it's also something completely different. And, again, when I go out with the limited amount of time that I have to fish, I want to go out and catch fish. I'm not trying to, you know, try and figure baits out right now right. or do something completely out of the out of the ordinary. So that's why I, just, I never gave it that much. So, James, we've uh, – or I, rather, have uh... – Heard about Saw Guy in Oklahoma. I guess there's Saw or two. I just haven't tracked them down. 
So I'd, I'd be interested in trying that. Mm-hmm. Saw guy, sauger, either one. And yeah, Nick, the hunt calls me too, man. I'm going out. Uh, I think I, I'll probably go tomorrow evening uh, after I get back. Um, Do you I, plan? I, I got a birthday party to go to tomorrow. So. You plan on some uh, KBF action? Yeah, yeah, eventually. So there's two actually, and I'm not trying to do a product plug here, but there's a uh, the Titan Fishing League. Uh, it's, it's through, uh, it's it's a good setup, but KBF is really where you want to be, right? Um, there's there's uh, local tournaments too. Yes. Um, the yep. Oklahoma Kayak Association, I think is what it's yep. called. And Tulsa Kayak has got their, their own, they put on as well. Yeah, so, so KBF is a little bit out of our league right now. Um, we've only we've only really been kayak fishing for a couple of months, so I'd like to get uh, a little more time under my belt or under our belt. Mm-hmm. And then uh, then definitely get on it. I mean, it's, it's it looks fun. Some fish and bluegill have been hitting good. Just got to find the bet. I know that. Hand, yeah, <laughs> hands and feet warm. Always got to find them. So my target crappie has been hitting good as well. Striper fishing. Oh, don't get him started, please. Don't get him started on striper. Fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to get in on some striper fishing. I really do. Yeah, bonafides are nice. By the way, bonafides are nice. Bonafides nice. Yeah, but I mean, I got a uh, big fish 105, and I got it used, and I got it for a steal. I got it for about three hundred dollars less than brand new when I got it. So it was a it was a heck of a deal. No, Clint, we're going with Hames now, and it's not it isn't Hames, it's Hames. <laughs> we're rocking that. Pelican, where did where is a good place to get a cheap rod? First off, you don't want to get a cheap rod. Okay, cheap rods have a tendency to break. I actually I broke one at the same lake mm-hmm. um a cheaper rod and inexpensive I and say cheap way way less dramatic than what i did like i had mine bent completely sideways yeah you cast into like a leaf yeah i had a leaf and it just snapped completely yeah. off so as far as rods brody you've actually got a really good one i mean brody's got one you saw that catfish that he pulled in oh yeah. that was like a six pound channel cat that he pulled in on that yeah, one. so no you're doubt. good on that so you can get budget rods though, Brody. It's not to say that you can't you can't shop intelligently, but you really do get what you pay for in a lot of cases. So if a deal seems too good to be true, generally speaking, Pickwick it is. Dam. Where's Pickwick Dam at? Pickwick? What is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, Pelican. So you got the what is it? The Catch One Twenty Clint. I was looking at those too. Yeah. Cheap rod equals bad day. That's well said. Well said. Oh, the catch one hundred, nice. Women don't like cheap rods. You want a dependable rod. See, I was tossing up between the catch one hundred and the big fish, but again, I mean, I got the big fish one hundred five for a hundred bucks less than the, than the catch one hundred. That thing's a monster. He hasn't get on his get on his butt about not doing a review of his kayak. That thing is an absolute tank. I love it. So I'm gonna be completely transparent with you guys. I. People have asked me for a gear breakdown, a kayak breakdown, a tour. I have plans to do all these videos, but I plan on doing them when the fishing is slow <laughs> so I can stay that's, current that's with some uploads. That's what. That's why I'm waiting to do those. I haven't forgotten about them. Um, I've got some real reviews that I want to do um, video reviews on, real review, real, yeah. I want to do a review on a couple of reels. A couple of the caskings I've had for – I'm coming up on six months with a couple of those, so I want to give you guys some feedback on those as well. Yeah, I re my reels about uh, – well, it depends on, on which reel. Some of my braid reels I leave the line on uh, at, until, like, the worst possible time to change it. Uh, my my fluoro reels, I'll switch them out, what, every three weeks or so I'll re mm-hmm. Um It just kind of depends. Like, I, I started throwing P-line, which I know – it has super mixed Later, reviews. Nick. So. Yeah, see, Big Nick. Uh, I know it has uh, like super mixed reviews, but I've I've really had a lot of good luck with it. Um, Seagar, I guess is how you pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had some good luck with that too. Dobbins rods are nice. Champion series, we have a budget. The Fury series. Yeah. yeah, and Brody, we'll help you out, man. We'll help you. We'll help yeah. you track down a rod. So yeah. don't don't think we're brushing you off. Don't it, worry about that, bud. I mean, if anything, I've got a couple extras that you'll be able to throw. Yeah, red label is what I ended up getting. Um, 
I, well, I got I got a, a thing of Red Label, and I got the what was it? Uh, I can't remember. I'd have to show you the picture. Uh, the P line I got this last time has been really good to me, um, and it's it's cheap. Arrow one two. So yeah, that's what I did, Frank. I I split it up. So Alex went out, helped me uh, kind of track down some things with a uh, a budget in mind, um, and uh, I just I just kind of spaced it out. So. so. Floral clear. Yeah, Hames, I love that uh, for the, the swim baits. I don't have any Magnum swims. Um, Later, Brody. Love you, buddy. I'm, I'm terrible. So me right now, my line, um, and I've actually just, I think I just went through my last spool of it. But I've just oh, been using yeah. the uh, the Casking Floral Coat. Um, and I did find one thing out. I mean, you guys have seen plenty of break-offs. <laughs> that I've had um, the knot that I was tying. I was tying. I, I don't know if I was doing it wrong, most likely because I am Oklahoma's worst angler. Uh, I was tying the Palomar knot and I was having consistent break offs. And I went back to just a basic knot that I've done my entire life with adding a hitch in there. And I got that thing hung up plenty of times last Sunday and was able to pull myself over to it and get it unhung and haven't had a break off since so casking floor coat i've been really happy with it it's a it's a budget line again fishing on a budget um and if i'm going to be buying any kind of cigar or anything like that i'm going to bass pro i i'm a firm believer that you know some of the stuff that goes to walmart is not the same quality that you would get from an actual tackle shop no doubt so yeah and the casking uh Casking reels, so man, it's been hit or miss. Like the one that I got, uh, I absolutely loved, and I think you you've got a couple of castings that are really mm -hmm. nice, but you've also had a couple that were uh, terrible, right? I mean, they just they they weren't what you were looking for. Yeah. Um, let's see, with my braid rods, I switched the braid from one reel in there. Like, Tommy Lee did pay him. Hames, it is a it's it's the only thing keeping me awake right now. Suffix. I've heard suffix is good. So my braid, I've been throwing uh, Cortland braid, uh, but I'm about out of that, and I'm trying to find. I kind of want to switch it up, right? I've I've liked it. I just at, at the price point, it. Frank, I will good. never, ever. <laughs> this is me. This is me. But I will never ever throw Power Pro again. Uh -uh. I took 65 pound braid for my snagging rod, and I had never had so many break-offs i mean 30 pound monofilament it was strin i think strin. Was, was, spider wire was better oh. was better than this power pro and i mean power pro was some of the first braid that i threw as well and i just i will not go back to it as far as braid goes um just because you know i was such a casking fanboy for a while i've got their mega eight and their Super Power 9. That was so a they, good one. The Mega 8 was really yeah, good. Yeah, no, I still have that on um, my topwater reel. I have not re-spooled that in probably three months, and that braid is held up. So that's just – that's me. You know, I, I don't like Power Pro. Um, I'm going to go with a better braid. Cortland, like he said, that stuff is solid. It's pricey. It's yeah, definitely it's pricey. pricey. But I get a pretty good deal on it, but uh, it's still – Hi, Mason. Deal, it's, it's pretty – Pretty pricey. Hi Mason's watching. Hi Mason. Hi Mason. Uh, I threw I threw spider wire in the spring, and be, you know, oh, it's strong, right? And how many break offs did I have on my braid? I think probably two or three. Yeah, your spider wire right. was, was terrible. Trash. But again, you got that from Walmart. Yeah. So Smackdown. Seagar Smackdown. Um. Yeah. <laughs> one says Power Pro sucks. One said, you know, What's Power that? Pro never Vicious, broke. vicious brand braid. Nice. Hmm. Now, again, with the Power Pro, I was snagging at the dam. So, I mean, up against rocks, it's it's not going to it's not gonna hold up as well. But just because of that, it put a bad taste in my mouth. Hey, uh, Clint, if your Ragnar was bad, uh, reach out to the, the guys at Monster Bass. They'll get you taken care of, man. Yeah, get in touch with, you know, if you go comment on one of their videos, um, you know, or reach out to support because they had a couple that were bad like that. The ball bearing was getting stuck in the end, so they did replace them for everybody that reached in about that. 
Yeah. Oh, great. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah, mine was, I guess I got lucky and mine was in good shape. So, yeah. uh, hold on. There was something. Yeah, I mean, Frank, so a lot of guys love Power Pro. Uh, one of the mm -hmm. groups that I'm in, that they they swear by Power Pro. I just, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Clint, our, my, mine was good. I think yours was good. Have you even thrown yours yet? What? Your Ragnar. Yes. Yep, I threw it, but it was uh, it was a big, fat no go. <laughs> big fat no go. But what did kill the, it the was bone. the Mad Max popper. Well, the bone, uh, the bones book they sent you did. Pretty, yeah, they all, uh, the old KVD sexy dog Junior. That yeah. guy right there. That was a good one. That one is solid. What? I can connect to my GoPro um, and capture different video. No. No, I wouldn't say not a fan of the Ragnar. It's just I was going specifically for Sandys and hopefully some Striper. But where the Striper were, they were definitely out of my reach. So, But I know there is a place here that I'd like to go sometime for Striper that we haven't been to yet. Somewhat, see, I love fishing. I just I, I love, I love fishing. fishing. I love fishing. I'm not specifically after largemouth. On a mission. This guy wants nothing but largemouth. On a mission. I got to get double digit bass. I just, I mean, I, I love it. I love fishing. The the new swim bait. Uh, I, I reserve the right to comment on that until tomorrow at like 10:30 a.m. Where are we at? Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Clint, yeah, my popper. So on the sexy shad Mad Max popper, over the course of three days, I probably caught 100 fish on that thing. And it was a little scuff from where the trebles were. And then I did have one, I had a largemouth actually rip off the front treble. <laughs> the split ring broke. It split. Yeah, yeah. It literally it, tore it off. It was gone. I, I reeled it back in and it was completely gone. So I had no idea. Oh, not to backtrack, but the thing – Thing for me on the Mad Max and Spooks is I just wasn't comfortable uh, walking them. Right, I, I wasn't comfortable with that that style, so yeah. I just I kind of avoided throwing them. But I've got that down now. Yeah. So the Max, the Power Pro Max Quattro is much better than regular Power Pro. That's good to know. I'm well. You know what? Dude, I'm gonna I, try something different. So GT, I've been uh, I've been throwing some river to sea stuff, and uh, I really like their baits. Uh, so the new Monster Bass Swim Bay, I'll talk about that really quick. I did throw that last night, and I've got a couple of the bull shads, you know, from Catch Co. And I will say that I think because it's 5-inch, it's got a one more joint in it. It swims better. It twitches. It glides. It's slower sinking. I'm a big fan. I think they, I think they knocked it out of the park. It looks cheesy. I'm not going to lie. It looks cheesy. It looks kind of cheap yeah. but the way it works in the water is fantastic all right I'm since, we're, with since that. we're breaking the ice on that the action is phenomenal right and it's a slow sinker so it's good. <laughs> nothing but largemouth that's right yeah mm -hmm. that's what i'm talking about mm -hmm. them green meanies and big heads listen i'm about them i'm about them but this there's dude. something about going out and catching sand bass because those things fight sandies hybrids throw them at they me. fight <laughs> I've been known to throw a couple fish at people. Big Nick is the worst at it. Oh, James Biospawn, that's uh I'm I'm all over that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I love Biospawn. Uh, the Exo Swims mm -hmm. are mm, 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 mm. They're I've actually been swimming at uh the what is it? The Vile Crawl? Yeah. Yeah, the Vile, Vile Crawl. Crawl. Yeah. Is really good. The Vile Bug, I've got some of those that I'm waiting to throw on in some trailers. Probably well, I wouldn't say this Sunday because I got to do the slam. So Frank, we're just just strictly for clarity's sake, uh, freshwater striper for us, right? We're we're landlocked plebs. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really are kind of a jerk. Though. I know. I've seen the stuff coming out of Georgia. I've seen those hybrids coming out of Georgia. Sexy shit. And that is. Black. Oh. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm hoping next year, I'm hoping next year I can travel some. That's my goal. My goal is to travel around a little bit more next year, go fish with people, uh, go to different states and fish. That is the goal. You know, but the first goal, first goal is to hit a thousand subs by the end of the year. That is my ultimate goal right now. Yeah. So, 
And that said, we appreciate you guys. So Frank got the sexy shed and the black beauty. All right. Nice. Lake Fork. Just oh, let yeah. me go. <laughs> yeah. Lake Fork is a bucket list. Yeah. For yeah, sure. We're going to get down. Who are my favorite YouTubers? You want to go first? I mean, are we talking fishing YouTube or are we just talking YouTube in general? That's the I'm, I want to ask. I want to ask that, Sean. Yeah, are we yeah, talking let's... fishing YouTube or YouTube in general? Because I've got a couple guys that are not fishermen that actually kind of started me on this entire journey of YouTube. Both? Both. All okay. Right. You go first. So, um, Casey Neistat, that dude sucked me in. Sucked me into the vlogging style, sucked me into YouTube. Um, he doesn't do as much anymore. Uh, you know, we, it was really taking a toll on family. He's very open about that. Um, and that's one thing that I've been very conscious of in this endeavor is to not take away from family. So like on the weekends at nighttime, I don't reply as much. I always want to reply to every single person that's on here. That's what I will always try and do. But weekends and nighttime, I don't because that's my family time. And I try and spend the most with them. But the way Casey did stuff, I'm a tech geek. I'm a nerd. Um, he did gear reviews, uh, Tech Tuesday, all this other stuff. And it just sucked me in and made me want to do this. And that's where my editing, I, I, do, some, I do some decent editing at times. Decent editing. I do let's, decent editing Let's not undersell it. The dude can edit. I spent probably two years on YouTube learning photography, learning videography. Um, I've done photography on the side. I still do photography on the side. So uh, Casey's probably my absolute favorite YouTuber. As far as fishing goes, um, Lunkers was the guy that got me into it. And I really related to him because veteran, prior service, father, um, I liked what he did. Now, to go back to the Googans here, I... I really miss the times when they would go out and fish. And ever since their contract with Catch Co, there's been a whole lot of advertising videos. There's been a whole lot of videos where it's just not the same kind of content. And that's what I've been trying to do is give the content that I found interesting and that sucked me back into fishing and maybe want to start fishing again. That's what I wanted to do. So mine's a little more complex and you wouldn't think as a 38 year old man, I feel this way, but Two, two non-fishing YouTubers I really like, Roman Atwood and uh, Seth Ferrosi. And for me, Roman Roman Atwood, because he is very family-oriented, right? He started out as a prankster, and frankly, I, I don't enjoy that kind of stuff. It's annoying, and uh, I, I struggle. If somebody pranked me, it's hard for me not to punch him in the mouth. If you guys don't know who Roman Atwood and Seth Ferrosi are, it's bodybuilding. Well, Roma, Roma's not. Well, Roman's not. No, but Seth, Seth. Seth is a bodybuilder. And he's, Seth is like... Yeah, he's he's probably the most honest bodybuilder on YouTube, right? He uh, he just breaks things down. So, um, and then as far as as far as uh, fishing. fishing and outdoors videos, so I just got turned on to a channel, and I'm struggling to remember the name, but um, I, I I like LFG. Um, mm -hmm. He's he's really good. Yeah. And I can't remember the name, but he did. The, Lunkers called him in uh, for the elk hunt. Um. I'd have to look it up. If you if you go check out uh, Lunkers TV's uh, last elk hunt video, he called in uh, he called in some guys to help him get it done. And I've been watching their channel, and it, it's really cool. They did sight fishing tuna, um, which it, it's crazy. But Black Tip H is another one that's fun to watch. Black yeah. Tip H is fun. Um, Demolition Demolition Ranch. Oh yeah, Demo uh, Ranch for yeah, sure. That's a good one. Um, Clint said, "Did you hear or read where?" A video where Rick said he was throwing a live target spider. Yes. So Monster Bass, next month they're doing a River to Sea. Uh, November is a River to Sea box. December is, I believe it's everything from iCast. Like it's yeah, all December's iCast lures. Yeah. And then January, either January or December are flip-flop, but one of the other one is a uh, Strike King takeover. I thought January was Strike King, but I can't remember either. Okay. But, yeah, the Lunker Hunt spider is coming. Uh, it's one of the iCast ones. So have you guys thrown the spider? And, and what do you think? All the guys that I've talked to said the legs fall off, that you have to glue them on. So old hickory. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But I'm a Gators fan. Man, it, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm a Florida Gators li fan. Listen, homies, if we get down to Tennessee, we're, we're going all over the place, man. i got to get on some of the big Tennessee bass. Ah, 
Brody's back. Brody's back. Brody's back. In the house. Sam Bassett, Ford Gibson are no joke. You're right, Frank. They are no joke. But so here's the thing. Here's the thing with John. This is why he doesn't like to go out. He he won't admit this. This is why he doesn't like to go this is fishing for Sam Bass his anymore. version of the story. Me and Nick and John go down to the dam. We go fishing for Sandys. And me and Nick, we probably caught close to 50 between the two of us. I caught 50 alone. And John just, I think he caught like 10 or 12. You go rewatch the video. He was so salty. He was... Man, I'm going to sit down. My back hurts. Man, man, man. Hasn't been back to the dam since. <laughs> He's so he still, Homies are still calling me Shrek, I think. Yeah. I mean, you are. I'm not Shrek. Yeah. Look, if you don't have a Senko behind your ear, you Thanks, Will Armour. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, right. Gators rule. That's right. Boomer. <laughs> Hey, speaking of David football, Dudley outdoors. what is up with Tennessee, man? I know we don't got to get into that. That's not what this is all about, but Tennessee, come on. Dude, Cooter said a co-worker had the spider in two casts yeah. and was missing legs. Yeah, that's wow. what I'm saying. Wow. Oh, it's like that. <laughs> so I think I was Shrek. <laughs> what the hell, man? So I am from Wichita, Kansas. And I just – I never really grew up watching football or anything like that. I watched one game at my grandparents' house, and I've always been a nature, wildlife nerd. So I saw this team. They were called the Gators, and I was like, I love alligators. I like this team. And it was when Dan Danny Werfel was playing, and he threw like a 98-yard touchdown pass against the Seminoles. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I've been a Gators fan ever since. That's how long I've been a Gators fan. I've – Stuck with them through. This is this is the last I'm going to say about times. football for this. Okay, but okay, there is no reason why you can't be a fan of a team that's not in the state that you live in. Why is it that you people assume that you in Oklahoma you must be an OU fan or an OSU fan, right? Yeah. Why can you not be a fan of a team without having some some buy-in? People give me. I'm why an can't OU I fan. like the Tulsa Gold Hurricanes? Right. I, I'm an OU fan. I'm a huge, huge, huge OU fan, and everybody's like, "Well, you got your OU gear for <laughs> shut up." You got your OU gear from Walmart. You know, it's it, it drives me crazy. That's Sean was crazy. born in Hayes. That's crazy, dude. I'm gonna stab somebody. Yeah, I'm from I'm from Wichita, Kansas. Missile forty eight. So, Listen, homies. <laughs> Missile forty eight stick bait. I'm not messing with this dude no more. That's good. I'll have to check that out because I've I really have been enjoying the wacky rig. Um as fall rolls around. Um, I'm gonna have to adapt. I mean, I'm I'm watching stuff every day, trying to learn big fast um, scooter to what is going to work best for fall, and then what I'm gonna do for wintertime. I don't I don't know any of that yet. I'm figuring all that out as I go. So, all right, let's let, let's talk about that for a second because you talk <laughs> about the missile, right? Listen, Frank, we got we got LSU tomorrow. I don't even want to think about Georgia right now. Okay. So, Gary Yamamoto. Lunker logs, yum. What's your what's your what's your go to if you have to pick? Me? Yeah. Between a Yamamoto and a yum, or a, a, and a lunker log, the the Guggen lunker log. I mean, I really only have experience with the lunker log, so yeah. I, I mean, have experience with all three, and I'm still I going threw, with the lunker log. Yeah, I mean, the six inch for sure. Uh, I think the six inches got much better durability. I had a uh, striking Ocho that came in a box a long time back, and I put it on an actual wacky rig hook, and I cast, and it completely flew off. <laughs> That's kind of a pain. completely flew off. Weedless, weedless. So, ooh, silver can gummy. Uh, weedless wacky rig. Wee, 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 wee. Yeah. LSU yeah. gonna James, stomp some get. Hermes right. is not being very nice. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Goo taggers. <laughs> Goo. Goo. <laughs> Get the drop shot in your art. I, I drop shot uh, all the time. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm always drop shot. I've got drop shots ready to go. Um, I'm actually going to be – yeah, flukes. God, I completely got away from flukes. This dude kills it on flukes. I though. was throwing flukes for a while. Like I really got them down. Um, yep. And actually I think probably the best hook that I had for the flukes – just for the sink, and it was the Zoom Super Salty 
just the super salty, not the salty plus, um, was the vector, the vector hook. You did pretty good with that and the uh, the red uh, gamagatsus. It just it didn't sink as fast. Right, and I right. liked I liked a little bit faster. So I mean, I'm obviously gonna have to go with a heavier wire hook. Clint, I'm glad you asked that question because I was gonna bring that up. Uh, I watched uh, a video. Tactical Bassin, which I, I don't ever want to steer people away from either of our channels. Tactical Bassin put out a video this morning uh, about tubes, so go check that out. <laughs> James just doesn't like Florida. Hey, I don't like Alabama either. Tennessee. Let's Alabama. Not, let's not talk Don't get about Big John going. Don't. If he's still here, oh, don't yeah. get that man Big going. Big John will come rolling tide on everybody. I'm a nature kind of guy too, Frank. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a jack of all trades. 16 to the front of your fluke. Yeah, that's a good idea. Smart. 18 bass on a fluke and she's eight. Oh, man. Oh, come on. (laughs) Pumpkin spice lunker logs, y'all. Oh, wait. This is a a young moto. Yeah. Nature kind of guy. That's for sure. That's for sure me. I mean, my favorite thing for photography is wildlife. I absolutely love shooting wildlife. That's that's honestly one of the other dreams. Are you asking if I Nico rig? Is that what you're asking? No, no, I don't. Uh, but I'd like to. I haven't. But uh, apparently now is the time of year for it. Okay, so I'll talk about the tubes here since Clint said that he felt overwhelmed by it. Yeah. I mean, I I had it playing in the background, and I just I couldn't keep up because there was so much talking about it. Um, tube jig hooks work really well. You know, there's weedless ones and everything like that. I'm actually going to be throwing one – as a drop shot on Sunday. Which is how I work them. And it's mainly because the color is just a perfect shad color. I'm going to be working it just a little bit faster. Um, I've only caught one bass on a tube this year, and it was in a pond, and it was one of the green pumpkin coffee tubes from Strike King, yeah. a KVD coffee tube. And it was, I mean, it was a decent bass, but tubes is just ah, – it's tough. That's why I want to get a little unconventional. I think one thing, Tactical talked about that today, actually. They were talking about how, you know, the Ned rig is very big right now. Yeah. And they think the tubes are going to excel this year. And I agree with that. But that's one other reason why I fish so unconventional. Like I'm swimming a Texas rig. It's stuff that I don't think the fish have seen as much. So it tends to trigger a bite a little bit better. T rig, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the the weighted tube head. So that's what we've. Uh, I've actually got some of those. I went and picked some up today. I had to go get some more uh, bolts for my crossbow, and they had uh, the heavier jig heads. Yeah, which they almost never have them, but uh, so I had to grab a couple. Yeah, I've got the weighted tube. The weighted tube heads. Um, they were throwing half ounce. Yeah, but that's the thing about tactical. When they're talking about that, they're talking about California. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are fishing. Big fish lakes, yep. You know, clear water. I mean, they're doing they're doing a lot. so. That's where you know we want to kind of step in, you know, for a different kind of South region. You know, not Texas. You know, Texas has got we, so much water and so much fish. We were so, just talking about blacklist jigs. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just threw a jig the other day. I threw one um, yesterday. Yeah, I, I threw a uh, – I was swimming a football head because I didn't have any swim jigs on me that day. Um, yeah, I mean, I've gotten away from a lot of stuff that I was using back in the summertime. Like, I've got away from the flukes. I got away from jigs. Um, we killed it on jigs, though, so I think – I got away from fishing Texas rig traditionally. For me, it seemed like – well, like, take the Whopper Plopper, for example. I went out and caught fish every single time we went. And I was I, I got to the point where I was looking for a, a challenge, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah, and I, I zoom flukes are the only thing that I have, Clint. I don't have any other kind of. Uh, I've got a couple. I've got the I got a watermelon red um, swim fluke. So I do have those. V and M baits. The uh, what was that? The high tail shad. I know it's not a fluke, but as far as swim baits are concerned, uh, the V and M high tail. Uh, it absolutely killed it for me. I don't know if you guys have got to see those. I think they were in the – were they in the September box? Either the August yes. or the September box. Yeah, they're, September. they're killer. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm 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 gonna be throwing some tubes. I've got uh, I've got some coffee tubes uh, as well. Yeah, just uh, I, I agree with attention. that 100. percent I think tubes are extremely underestimated. I think oh, it's that got the paddle too. Tubes are not thrown very much. Yeah, the super swim. Um, yeah, tubes are not used much. So I I do believe I, that's why I like to throw them. That's why yeah. I like to be unconventional because if you guys want to go out and you know catch fish. Don't always follow the status quo. I think uh, I think it was one water, one rod, one reel who said it best. He said he was fishing a tournament, and uh, yep. he was fishing with kicking their bass. And he had to, yeah, anyways, he was fishing with him, and he was just catching them on all kinds of weird stuff. And he said, "Bass don't read textbooks," and that's that has stuck with me, and that's why I've been doing stuff that is. Uncon unconventional frowned upon the wrong way to fish it anything like that so you guys are out there and it's not working try fishing it completely differently cooter i want to get me a couple magnum swims man i i want to try it yeah i bet you do yeah <laughs> shrek 101 man i got <laughs> i've got a book of uh like general life rules and basically it's how not to live your life <laughs> don't block me ain't nobody getting blocked I Balake. No. Um It's can you spell his name right though, Clint? Hames. It's Hames. I'm from SoCal and brought my fish out here. Around the full moon in October, the large crow. Yeah, so we've got a full moon Sunday. Sunday. And I don't know if you guys Oh, I don't want to spoil it. Do we want to spoil it? I don't want to spoil it. What? I'm sure everybody's seen it, right? What? The Spro. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let's be agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah, the rock crawler plant. I'm that's, so that's so true. Far. Fish don't know how big their body is, so throw big. Um, what was that? That uh, you sent me the fish from the the church pond that you got off that popper that was about the popper was about <laughs> twice as big as the fish. Yeah, I mean it was. <laughs> Maybe a half an inch smaller than the popper. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, I'm curious, but so one of my one of my buddies, he started up a uh, a podcast. I'm not big on podcasts, so I don't know if you guys listen to podcasts or not. Um, but I told him that I get on here and give him a cheap plug. Uh, it's Andrew Hayes, and his podcast is called Tackle Talk, and it is on iTunes Pod or podcast i don't know what it, what is it called what well, is just called ipod i no, you ipodcast can't i don't know but tackle talk tackle talk podcast i listened to a couple of them today when i was editing and he's got some good stuff in there i like him because he's kind of kind of like me and uh bucks the status quo so i'm i'm a big fan big fan of that man bear so, pig man bear pig man bear pig no i have not vnm with the chatterbait box i didn't get a chatterbait but yeah, did I get a blade of jig? V and M came. Oh, so I know in September when there was like a big, a big influx for monster bass. Some guys when they thought they were ordering the region box, they got the summertime sampler. So a lot of guys got the live target frog. They got the airquake. They got the V and M tilapia thunder shads. Um, they got baits like that. Sounds like a wrestler name. <laughs> Thundershed. Thundershed. Um, let's see. In the June or July box. I think that's when I was still uh, yeah. like alternating between one of the 500 different bait boxes. So they threw in the tilapia shad earlier, and then they did another VNN Larry bait, I thought. So what up, Larry? I'm calling him Big Larry. Um, With a name like that, he's got to be a Big Larry, right? Oh, yeah. Look at that flex. Yeah. Double flex. Oh, Boom. Yeah, double bicep right there. Um, did you talk about the rock crawler? Uh, we just kind of touched on it, just, just that we're excited about it. So with the full moon being Sunday, uh, we're expecting a, a craw, crawdad. Okay, they're crawdads here. I don't care about crawfish. Crayfish. Crayfish. Who says crayfish? <laughs> to yuppies. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, we're, expecting a, uh, we're expecting a hatch too, so really, really excited about that one. I was I was pretty happy with the uh, with the crankbaits that came from the south because you got you know, square bill that's two to five and the rock crawler is four to eight. No, so. no comment, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I'm plugging my channel again. Oki Outdoor Adventures, the dumbest channel on YouTube. I use brush hogs. Oh man, brush hogs are legit. Crawl daddies. Yeah, I've heard them. I've heard people say that too, Cooter, but not uh, not too much around here. It's just crawl dads. It's actually what he calls his uncle Cooter. My uncle Cooter. No, that's what you call your uncle. It's crawl daddy. No, my uncle Cooter is crawl daddy. Yeah, he is. It's crawl. Crawl father. He is crawl daddy. Crawl daddy. Daddy. <laughs> daddy. That camp, right. camping trip was awkward as hell. Brush hogs way. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I realized I didn't have an uncle. <laughs> Missile baits. Uh. I got a couple of those. That's inflammatory. I think I got. No, I got the excite down here. Big bite baits. This. Uh, he's XD. got a. He's got a plot. Look, he's digging through a box of tackle on the left. Steel. Swim. Swim jig down here. It's just stuff that I need to get rid of. Yeah. There they are. Crawfather from missile is a killer bait on a swivel head. Bubble gum. Now you're just hold talking. that up. Hold it up. Hold it up. What do y'all think about these uh, bubble gum trick worms? Y'all ever catch any fish on those? I threw it for about forty three seconds. Didn't catch a damn thing. The Z Man minnows. Yes. Yeah. It was uh, a couple of videos back, but that was a uh, that was a killer a killer for me. A fat couple of bones. Is that fat Ike or fat Ika? I'm looking that up. Forgive me. Yeah, no, the Z-Man minnows, the diesel minnows, those have worked uh, really the, well for me. Yeah, they're really good. Um, I'm a Z-Man fanboy. Bubblegum bubble gum, bubble gum, bubble gum flukes. Yeah, I got a couple of the bubblegum flukes as well. Oh. I really. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look, Cooter coming in hot. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that's got me a little damp. Yeah. I like it. I think it's just because you're sweating because you're nervous. Though. It's because I'm wearing a hoodie. <laughs> Rat tail bubblegum trick worm. That sounds like a wrestler name too. I did say it right the first time. Okay, thank you. You did a cook for it or it would have been. Uh, dude wipe. What? Ew! <laughs> Took him a while to catch on to that one. Just go ahead and read it out loud and make it super awkward, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, man. Pork shed. My favorite kind of shed. Sunday, we're going to going to this lake, and I'm really hoping that we can knock the slam out really quick because we know there's some big fish down there, and I, I want to chase some big fish. So I'm really hoping this Sunday come out with some more tanks. Um, weekends have been delivering when it comes to the big fish. That's That's been happening, so – Tentacles up. Oh, yeah. So I might see. I like a little bit heavier when it comes to the fluke, though. Me personally. Um, so I mean, I I did have I had good luck on the on that pork shad. We're we're going to the largest capacity lake in the state of Oklahoma with a volume of two million ninety nine acre feet and a surface area of one hundred two thousand acres. Maybe if you like this Sunday, sounds good, dude. Yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, on a serious note, what's the go-to lake in your area? Ooh, I would say probably the go-to lake in our area is Big Selma. A lot of people go there. It's got Florida strain in there. It's tough. So don't don't get me wrong. It is extremely tough. I miss you already, Larry. But Larry out of here? Yeah, Larry, Larry's got it. All right, go. later, Larry. Um, so Big Selma, I don't know if you've been there. It is pressured. It's tough. But the fish fight, and there's big fish in there. I think the record out of there is like 14 pounds. Yeah, it was so, close to a state record. Like yeah. it was just a few ounces short. Yeah. Um, so Bixoma is one. Uh, it's a little. It's definitely not big. I we haven't really been to much big water. Um, oh, I fish Keystone, but you yeah, haven't, you haven't got to get out there yet. Yeah, Keystone's a big one. Uh, Grand is another go-to. Um, we need a boat for that. Then you fall. Yeah, it'd be hard on kayaks. Yeah, I want to get out. I want to get Alex uh, out on Skytook, which is uh, Oklahoma's. It's 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 one of Oklahoma's premier smallmouth lakes. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a couple of others down south. I think I can't remember the name of it. So I mean, we're gonna have to wrap this up, or I'm gonna have to wrap this up pretty quick. But probably less than ten acres. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
But if you got a boat, then I mean you can definitely get around some. But if you're looking for smallmouth, I know ten killer is killing it right now. Oh yeah, ten killer. But one up north, uh, and it's uh I can't remember what lake it's branched off of, but it's called Pumpback. And Pumpback has got smallmouth out there. And it's a troll only, I mean electronics only uh kind of lake. Perfect for kayaks, perfect for John boats. Um but yeah, Pumpback is definitely one. It's up north. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the map. Where's it quick. branched off of? Off Chimney Rock Lake. What is that? That might be it. That might I be think it. It's, that's part of Grand, I think. Yep. Uh, so Pumpback is there. Lake Hudson. What's up, Damon? It's Hudson. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Ten Killer. I know that because uh, my buddy Bo Bo Adams has been killing it out there, and he's yeah. harassing me to get out there with him. So I think maybe next weekend I might try and get out there and get on some actual smallmouth because Nick couldn't deliver. Me small Ouch. mouth this year. I'll probably go deer hunting since I'm going to get left. He's behind. not here. So, um, guys, I got to wrap up. I got to get out of here. It's eight o'clock here. Uh, time for me to close the store down, go home, and have a beverage with the wife, and maybe make some dinner. I don't. Shrek out, y'all. I made chicken and dumplings and I can't even eat it. <sighs> I'm glad we did this too. We'll really catch you later, Hames. Don't forget to go check out my channel. I'm watching for you. Really am glad. Cooter! Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Guys, thanks again. Go subscribe. Oki Outdoor Adventures. Uh, like it was Bass and Bucks Outdoors. I had to and change it. Oki Outdoors and Mad Out Oki John. This one sticks. I don't know. So just go subscribe to him and obviously you know, link my channel. Tell your friends yeah. about me. You link my channel. Guys, tell your friends about me. Hold tell on. your friends. Let's get some subscribers going. Don't okay. Shoot it down. We just want to have fun fishing. Wait a second. Okay? Wait we'll a see second. you later. Wait. Love you guys. Bye. Ah! See ya. We're out of here. Done.